Uh. Hey, family. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening to you. How are you doing? I hope you're doing fine. Hello, hello, hello. Listen, the first thing I want to do, though, I want to do a little housekeeping. Um, and on a serious note, I'm a little concerned. I'm worried. I'm, I'm waiting to get um, word from my sister-in-law. My oldest brother had a surgery on his heart. And, um, you know, when you start getting this age, you know, those little things begin to happen. And um, I talked to him on yesterday. I talked to him on the day before because this is the second, you know, time he's getting a, a stint. They said one side of his heart, the valve was so clogged that they call it the widow maker. It was like 99% clogged, you know, and um, it just got some, made me have some concerns. Like, how did you know? Because um, my heart always checks out good. And I'm sure his did. He he's a former athlete. I mean, but how do you know? And how do you get like 99 percent blockage and not know? Um, so I'm a little concerned about that, y'all. So I decided to make some videos and be with the family. Hopefully, y'all can um, uh, uh, take some of this little stress off me. Uh, by giving you some information. And today the information is going to be about uh, Black Hollywood. Okay. Uh, paying homage to the actors and um, others. Because a lot of people don't know that black performers uh, appeared in Hollywood for as long as motion pictures have been produced. In fact, in the early years of employment of black actors was rare. And when featured roles came along where black player was required, the film's producer frequently hired a white actor and let him or her portray the part dubbed with burnt cork. This book is the record of the progress and the black artists from those early films up to the present day. When some of the artists have become major stars and many films are devoted exclusively to black themes. So, uh, in the volume that you I'm about to share with y'all, it's going to be covering a number of players and films, um, which this book attempts, I think, and it's very possible some of the performers have been overlooked or given a shorter strip than the individual reader might think that uh, is deserved. Films as well, which some readers may not feel deserve attention, may have been dealt upon only briefly or not at all. So, um, it's important that y'all know that in this book, you know, we're going to take a look, uh, go back because I want y'all to tell me when is the time going to come that we reclaim our gifts. Um, Hollywood is a place that, uh, a lot of times overlooks us, period. Okay, and so uh, when a brother like Oscar Michaud came along, who was one of the early first black filmmaker, he was in the 30s. Okay, uh, we always look for white people for validation. When the Academy Awards come calling, we act like that's such a high honor. But when the NAACP Award want to acknowledge us, we don't feel uh, like that's the height of the pinnacle. When it all boils down to that same thought process that the white man's ice is colder. That is a learned behavior. That is a taught behavior for generation after generation after generation. And in order to break that chain, it has to be some drastic mental health um, application. That has to be done to that mind because this that mindset is is hard. It's one of the reasons why um, you have all these black directors in Hollywood 
They all complain about not being able to make movies. You have all these black actors and singers and performers in Hollywood, and none of them, none of them have the foresight of a uh, John Mayer, uh, a Louis. I'm sorry, a Louis B. Mayer, um, who was a garbage collector, a Russian Jew, uh, and he used to push garbage until he figured out. I'm going to make some movies. And I don't want to be Lord and this black man right here. So I'm going to flip the script and I'm going to take all the heat off us. When we do start making these movies and we're going to sit and square directly the hatred, all that directly in y'all laps. And it's been that way ever since. The motion picture has helped deteriorate the image of the black man. Very seldom, if at all, was it used to build him or her up. And that's some of the stuff I want to discuss. Uh, so let's, uh, let's see. I'm going to start right here. In 1914, a black actor named Sam Lucas was given the title role in the third remake of Uncle Tom's Cabin. The first Hollywood film on a black theme to cast some Negro actors actually in the roles. The first version of Uncle Tom's Cabin was produced as a one reeler in 1903. Harriet Beecher, uh, Beecher Stowe's great abolitionist work, written as a passionate indictment on slavery, had attempted to portray blacks as human beings. The film, on the other hand, changed the story into a sentimental melodrama in which Uncle Tom was presented as a paragon of black subservience. The main emphasis of the film was on Uncle Tom's devotion to little Eva, the in invalid, invalid child of his white master. Uncle Tom's Cabin was, was remade yet again in 1918. This time with a white actress doubling as both Topsy and Eve. With most of the action revolving around the two little girls. In the meantime, a handful of independent color film companies were emerging. Okay, These companies were owned by whites but crafted exclusively to film gores in the nearly 400 black movie theaters. Which of most were in the South. A major problem in producing these films was finance. An independent producer was rarely financed without joining forces with a major studio and having upon its artistic and financial and drawing upon its artistic and financial resources. This meant that the black community was dependent on Hollywood unless backers could be found for large scale production or unless black producers learned to improvise. One black producer who made films with a minimum of capital on a very short shooting schedule was a man by the name of Oscar Michaud, a wheeler dealer who filmed The Wages of Sin and The Broken Violin in 1914 and Harlem After Midnight in 1934. Lacking a financial backer, Michaud drove to every town in the South that either had a black cinema or had a theater that allowed blacks in at least one day a week. He would show the cinema manager still photographs of what he claimed was his latest film. Packing them in uh, is what started happening in the North. That's what he would claim, right? The photographs might depict Lorenzo Tucker, his leading black male star, embracing a nude woman, or perhaps he would show a Harlem dance review. Michaud asked the managers to advance him $20, and he would send uh, the film to them. Most of the cinema managers uh, apparently fell for this technique and advanced him the money. In about a month, Misho would have enough money to finance the film. <laughs> Misho was unable to use studio lots for shooting his film, so again, he had to improvise. 
He shot scenes in his own apartment in Central Park in the street. He wrote scripts, directed the film, set up the lighting, edited the material, and handed his own dis handled his own distribution. Oscar Michaud, a black genius, a real black. Now, if he can endure all that at this time, okay, because the audience has always been there, the way we want to hear our story and to tell our story. And for me to have a Tyler Perry, uh, 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 Spike Lee, uh, 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 Mario Van Peebles, uh, who else is out there? Uh, 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 Fuqua, uh, Antoine Fuqua, is that his name? Listen, y'all are too brilliant of black producers, directors, um, filmmakers, not to figure this out. You know, Holly, that's why, and I think Tyler Perry, that's what he had in mind when he, uh, got the old confederate. We have to uh, stop trying to get out of that way they trained us. We got to learn to relive and relove ourselves all over again. Because we really ain't got nothing coming from them. And then the ones that want to continue to sell us out, at least they'll stand alone. We'll see them. We'll have a better grasp on where they at. That's up. Maybe wishful thinking. Anyway, Oscar Michel used every expo exploitatory gimmick he could muster up to grab an audience. For example, displaying large photos of rape scenes with semi nude figures. He would insert sequence quite unrelated sequence quite unrelated to the story and to the film. Once he even inserted a scene of a Harlem dance troupe into a Western movie. The audiences loved nudity so much and voiced their approval to the uh, theater managers. However, films attempting to deal with racial injustice were not being made by independent producers, black or white. Their emphasis like that of the larger film industry, was on entertainment. This policy was not simply attributable to the profit a motive, however. The feelings in the South towards blacks would have made it extremely dangerous to show any film to a black audience in which the social or political aspects of racism were depicted. Even though white audiences did not patronize black producers, such a film had been shown and exhibited, the exhibited movie house would have been burned down after no more than one performance. Most of the early black films were inferior even to Hollywood B-movies and made on even more limited budgets. If it seemed impossible for black actors to produce anything and make anything but safe movies, their failure to utilize the talents of blacks in the technical aspect of the filmmaking was a serious oversight. There have been few black screenwriters, directors, and set designers or film editors. The failure of the black producers in this respect may indicate that they were less concerned with the technical side of filmmaking than they were with acting. It must not be forgotten, however, that the technical trade unions were closed to black people. Also, black producers and actors who worked for the independent companies were blackballed by the union leaders. So the social and political situation for blacks in the period before the First World War was very, very bleak. By 1912, Negroes had become suspicious of Roosevelt, whose handling of the Brownsville incident had disappointed earlier hopes. Nor was there any confidence placed in Taft, who, was, uh, who had been elected to president in 1908. So the NAACP officials therefore drafted a statement that they wished included in a progressive Republican platform, 
You hear that Republican platform? Um, call once more for a complete enfranchisement of all Negroes and pleaded for an end to the unfair laws that discriminated against black and colored people in employment, housing, and other areas of life. But y'all already know Woodrow Wilson, who become will become president, who became president, was concerned primarily with banking and tariff and trust reforms. So when under his administration, the Clayton Antitrust Act was passed. This act sought to reform the industrial labor union, but it did nothing for blacks, uh, since most of them were excluded from the unions. In fact, Wilson's first Congress was flooded with bills advocating discriminatory legislation against Negroes. And a Wilson executive order segregated eating and restroom facilities for all federal employees. Burt Williams was the first major black star to appear in a film. Now, that is the story of the first black producer, and his name is Oscar Michaud. Um, and what he had to go through in just a small window to what it was like to be an entertainer and to want to be in film uh, back in that time and the obstacles and the pushback. And really, as far as I'm concerned, wash, rinse, repeat. Wash, rinse, repeat. We are now in year 2022. Still talking these same conversations. Ain't y'all tired yet? I am. I am. Anyway, let me know how you feel below uh, in the comment section. If you like what you hear, please like. Please share the video, y'all, because you know there's a lot of shadow banning going around. I just don't know how you drop 2,000 subscribers uh, in a matter of a couple weeks <laughs> or a month over the time, but it happens. So I'm thinking it might really be something to this. But anyway, if you like what you hear, subscribe to the channel, like the channel. Let's grow the channel. And any suggestions that you have, leave them below and let's deal with it. Any topics that you want to talk about, hit me up in the email, the mental house TV at gmail.com. Leave the suggestion below or let, um, or Shoot me uh, inbox. All right. See you in the next video.